Hello everybody, this is Cap of Codicalism, and I would like to welcome you to the 12th video in my Beginners C++ tutorial series. So as you guys can probably tell by now, this is going to be another Concepts video. And I know Concepts videos probably aren't your guys' favorite, but I think they kind of help in, you know, really solidifying what's happening, you know, in your minds. Because when you see it here, it's kind of planting the seed. And then when you write it in code, it really just really helps solidify it, I think, anyways. So let's get this started here. So the first thing I want to kind of uh, mention is don't overcomplicate this, guys. I know you can do a lot of cool things with classes, and you can make really complex classes, but in the end... Classes are just a way to organize your code. So don't overthink it. That being said, let's jump into what is a class. A class allows you to combine your related data and functions in the same place. And you can kind of think of a class as a blueprint for an object. You make objects based off of your class. And you can compare it to a house. When you want to build a house, you first sketch up a blueprint, and then you build a house based off of that blueprint. Now, you can also take that same blueprint and build identical houses, or you can slightly modify them. And we'll talk more about that when we get into the coding session that goes along with this concepts video. So how do you define a class? Well, you define a class using the class keyword followed by the name of your class, opening braces, and then closing braces, followed by a semicolon. That's very important to note is that there is a semicolon after the last brace, last closing brace. So let's talk about the class data. So the class data is the data that the uh, class methods are accessing and modifying. Now I'll probably refer to them to the class data as class attributes because when I was in college that's always how we referred to them was class attributes and it's kind of ingrained in my brain now. <laughs> so you know that's that's kind of how that stuff works out. So if you'll notice here our attributes for this class are a num and another num. And you'll also notice that they are located under the private keyword. Now, in the next slide, we're going to talk about the private and public keywords. And uh, under the public keyword, you'll notice we have all of our methods. So let's talk about access restriction. You can restrict access to your class data and methods by using the keywords public, private, and protected. So a public data member or method is accessible inside and outside of the class. So it's pretty much accessible to anyone. A protected data member or method is accessible by only the class itself and its children. And what I mean by its children is classes that inherit from it. And we'll get more into that when we start talking about inheritance in later videos. A private data member or method is accessible by only the class itself and no one else. Not its children and not any other, you know, classes or objects. So why would we want to do this? Well, this technique is called data hiding, and we're not necessarily hiding the data from anyone because, you know, we think we'll, they'll do harm with it or anything like that. It's mostly just to make things more simple. And this kind of goes along with encapsulation, which we'll also talk about in later videos. But we don't want people to have to deal with, you know, the nitty-gritty stuff in our class. The only thing they need to know about 
is you know how they can use it so we use private data members and methods inside of our class to you know do the nitty-gritty stuff inside the class and keep it inside the class or object so that the people that are using the class don't have to deal with it kind of like an electrician you know wiring a house the people that are using the house are only going to have to be concerned with where they plug in their electronics you know the light switches and the fuse box they don't need to know about all of the wires you know inside the walls and the roof that would all be you know for our purposes we'll call private they don't need to know about that stuff they just need to know about the light switches the fuse boxes and where they plug in their appliances so how do you create an object well there are two main ways to create an object as you can see here and the first one is by far you know my preferred way just because it's much simpler to deal with you see when you create an object using this method here you don't have to worry about deleting that object when it goes out of scope it will automatically be destroyed when you create a method or create an object I'm sorry using this method you do have to decide when you want to delete that object so you're gonna to want to use this method as often as you can and only use this method when you have to so accessing object data members and methods so after you create an object you can access the data members and methods through the access operator which in C++ is the dot I have a little example here with you know the class before example dot get a num now it's very important to note here and I kind of made this probably more confusing than I should have you don't want to use the class name you want to use the object name the object that you created off of that class sorry about that guys my dog was making you know really loud noises in the background she was playing with the bottle so uh, yeah this is going to be your object name not your class name unless it is a static data member or method that you're accessing and we'll get into that of course later in future videos and this is assuming that the data member and methods are public if they're not public you won't be able to access them like this which I will show in the coding portion of the tutorial and that's pretty much the basics of classes guys I mean it's you know it's not complicated uh, you know and just kind of sit back and think about it for a few minutes and watch the coding video and I'm sure somewhere along the line it's really gonna click in your mind what's going on and you're just gonna be like oh man why didn't I get that that was so easy Cause, I mean it happens to everyone everyone that I've talked to uh, in programming has had that moment where it all just kinda clicks and makes sense to them I mean if you understand it right off the bat that's great so uh, if you like this video please like and subscribe or you can also follow us on Twitter at we are Codeclism, and I will see you guys in the next video alright everybody uh, I'm making this little add-on to the video because after I got done recording this video I kind of noticed an issue with one of my slides is the creating an object slide uh, for some reason my brain was still in Java land so we need to make a few modifications here you don't need the parentheses there and you don't need the parentheses there and we need to put the star symbol here and I'll explain um, 
all this stuff in the coding video. But I just kind of wanted to uh, make this little add-on to clear that up. And uh, I really do apologize for this. And I will see you in the next video.